that happens after the double strand break is created. To send this down the pathway of homologous recombination, an exonuclease has to come along and remove some of the DNA near the double strand break. Indeed, what the exonuclease will do is chew back DNA to leave three prime uh, protruding ends. So I'm going to have my nuclease come in and create three prime protruding ends. Then, after the three prime protruding ends are created, one of the two three prime ends can then be used to hybridize to DNA from the homologous chromosome. So the homologous chromosome, which is drawn in red then, has to be partially denatured. I'm going to draw it right here. So that here's the five prime and three prime ends. Okay, and some of the DNA here is displaced, okay, and there are proteins that allow this to happen. In fact, the protein that allows this to happen is RAD51. So here is the protruding. Over here is the protruding three prime overhang. And it can do strand, what's called strand invasion. And, and it can invade the homologous DNA duplex to displace one strand. Now there is another strand of DNA from the DNA double strand break. And that strand I'm drawing right here. Again, I'm going to keep track of the five prime and three prime overhangs. All right. So now that strand invasion has occurred, it has displaced some of the homologous DNA, the intact from the intact chromosome, and that is that displacement forms a structure that we call a D loop. And the reason it's called a D loop is if you're falling asleep during this lecture, your head will tilt to 90 degrees, and you'll suddenly wake up to see the letter D. Okay, now that we've formed a D-loop, DNA polymerase can come along, and at this point, at this three prime overhang, it can begin copying the homologous DNA. Similarly, on the opposing strand, DNA polymerase can copy the displaced DNA. When this copying finishes, ligase can bring the strands together on the upper strand. And when this copying gets to a certain point, ligase can join. And now what you have here is the formation of two holiday junctions. And these holiday junctions then need to be resolved. The reason this pathway has become very important recently is because Patients who have hereditary breast cancer, because they have a mutation in either one of two genes, BRCA1 or BRCA2, BRCA1 or BRCA2. If patients have are carriers for mutations in either of these genes, they have a, a very high risk for getting either breast or, or ovarian cancer. Uh, such patients have strong family histories, and the syndrome is called hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. These genes are involved in homologous recombination, and their involvement in homologous recombination is to load RAD51 onto the protruding single strands. And I'm going to draw some RAD51 molecules. Here's RAD51. And here's the molecule, a little circle. And these RAD51 molecules basically facilitate the formation of, of the D-loop. They facilitate strand invasion and formation of the D-loop. BRCA1 and BRCA2 work together to load RAD51 onto the protruding 3' overhangs. So 
tumors that arise in patients who have who are carriers for mutations in BRCA1 and BRCA2, all of those tumors have knocked out both alleles of BRCA1 or both alleles of BRCA2. And as a result, their tumors are defective in homologous recombination. And recent developments have now introduced drugs that can potentially be used to treat breast cancer because they actually make cells defective that are defective in uh, homologous recombination particularly susceptible while leaving uh, the patient's normal cells alone because the patient is heterozygous for mutation in BRCA1 and BRCA2. And so those cells, those normal cells, have normal homologous recombination. Anyway, this is a very important pathway, and I hope this has made the formation uh, of these holiday junctions clear to you. Thank you.